again it's good to be with you this sunday how are you today um hoping you're well and that you're enjoying your holiday yes i hope you're enjoying your holiday and you're having a good time but also that you're taking some time to revise so that you don't forget everything and also i'm hoping that you read your bibles while you're at home so that you can live god's way and obey god so it's a new day and another day to look at God's word. Let us get our notebooks, pens, and Bibles as we begin. And also let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for your goodness and kindness to us. Thank you because... We have the opportunity to know you, to learn from your word, and even to tell others about it so that they can also come to know you. We pray that as we look at your word today, you will speak to us and give us understanding by your Holy Spirit and also help us live according to your ways. For the glory of your name, in Jesus' name we pray. It. Amen. Amen. Hello again. My name is Irene. And it's good to be with you this Sunday. Today we are looking at a lesson titled Soul's Conversion. And it comes from Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 22. Soul's Conversion, Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 22. I don't think you remember Saul from the past lessons we've been doing. Um, do you remember when Stephen was killed and the person who was there supervising, in fact, they put their clothes at his feet and he was approving and after that he started, they started looking for Christians to take them and arrest them and that's how they started running out of Jerusalem. So that particular soul is the one we are looking at today and we are looking at him changing I want us to think before we I tell you what we our take home point is or our main point is um what is the worst thing you can imagine someone doing what's the worst thing you can imagine someone doing and could you imagine that person ever changing to someone good or to doing the right thing the opposite of that thing that they are doing can you imagine them changing? What would need to happen for them to change? As usual, if you have a neighbor, you can discuss this with them. What's the worst thing you can imagine someone doing? Can you ever imagine that person changing to do the opposite of that thing? And what needs to happen for that change to happen? Because in our story today, we have someone who's doing something bad. And it's quite bad. But then they change. And something happens to make them change. So today we are going to be learning that Jesus can change anyone he chooses. Jesus can change anyone he chooses, no matter what they have done wrong. 
Jesus can change anyone he chooses, no matter when, what they've done wrong. When they repent and trust in him, they can be used by him. Jesus can change anyone he chooses, no matter what they have done wrong. When they repent and trust in him, they can be used by him. And so, let's go to our story about Saul. So last Sunday, we saw... Um, Last Sunday we saw Philip and the Ethiopian and that's when people had been scattered from Jerusalem to other places and we saw the good news crossing into Africa. Today we are seeing, we are picking up from again the stoning of Stephen and we saw from that that after his death Christians started being persecuted and they were being looked for to be taken to prison. Anyone who believes, anyone who follows Jesus, anyone who's talking about Jesus, they are being picked up and taken to prison. And one of the people who was leading that was Saul. He was one of the people hurting Christians, and he even agreed with Stephen's death. So after that whole scenario, that whole incident happening, this is what happened next. Saul continued threatening Christians and going with all his energy and everything he has to arrest everybody that he could get his hands on. And he even went to the religious leaders, the chief priests, and asked for letters to go to other places to get these Christians and bring them back to Jerusalem and arrest them. He went and asked for letters to go to Damascus. Let's open there and read. So Acts chapter 9, verse 1. I'm reading from the NIV Bible. It says, Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you'll be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground but when he opened his eyes he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. And then I'm telling you the story from that point on. So, Saul is busy persecuting Christians. He has asked for letters to go to Damascus. On his way to Damascus, a bright light shines. And he falls off his horse. And he hears a voice saying, why are you persecuting me? And he says, who are you? And the voice tells him, I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. And then the voice tells him, now get up and go into the city and you'll be told what you should do. He gets up, but when he tries to move, he can't see anything. So the people with him help him and take him into the city. And in Damascus, there was a disciple, follower of Jesus called Ananias. And the Lord had told him, there's a man called Saul, he's coming to you. You're going to pray for him. You're going to place your hands on him and he'll be able to see. But Ananias has heard about Saul and he knows this is the man who's going from house to house, getting Christians, arresting them, making sure that they are punished. He doesn't want followers of Jesus. So he tells him, ah, God, are you sure you want me to go and meet with this man? And verse 13 tells us, Lord, Ananias answered, I had many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. 
And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord told Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and to their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. So Ananias went to the house and entered it. He placed his hands on Saul and he told him, Jesus who appeared to you has sent me so that you can see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, verse 18, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Okay, so when we continue down, we see that Saul spent several days in that, in, with the disciples in Damascus, the followers of Jesus. Remember, those are the people he had come to arrest. Now he was spending time with them. At once, verse 20, he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. So, here we meet Saul, a person who hated Christians, who was out to persecute them, to arrest them. He didn't want news about Jesus spreading. He didn't want followers of Jesus growing, becoming many. And he was busy arresting them. But on his way, Jesus arrested him instead. There was a bright light that flashed and that stopped him in his tracks. And Jesus even told him, you're persecuting him, me. So he told him to go and be prayed for and be told what to do. And Ananias prayed for him and Saul must have repented, must have believed and repented because he received the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us he received the Holy Spirit. And while he had been blinded, now the scales of, fell off his eyes and he was able to see. And as soon as he was able to, he started preaching to people and telling them about Jesus. So he changed from someone who was persecuting Christians even supporting the killing of them to someone who now wanted to tell people about Jesus. A few days before that, if somebody told, if he found someone talking about Jesus, he would have arrested them. But now he had become one of those people. And why had this happened? It's because Jesus had changed him. He had changed him and he had plans to use him to go and tell the good news to people who are not Jews. He had plans for him. And when Saul believed and repented and received the Holy Spirit, Jesus started using him to tell others about Jesus. He's the same person that we know wrote so many letters in the New Testament. Most of the letters in the New Testament were written by Saul or Paul. Um, he's called Saul in this passage, but he's the same person called Paul. One is a... a Greek version of the name, like if you have a name and it's said differently in another language, that's that that's that's why we have Saul and Paul, but it is the same person. So we are looking at today we are saying that Jesus can change anyone he chooses, no matter what they've done wrong. Jesus can change anyone he chooses, no matter what they've done wrong, and when they repent and trust in him, they can be used by him. And here we see that Jesus changed Saul. Even if Saul had approved of Stephen's death, even if he had gone, getting letters to go and put Christians in prison, stopping them from preaching, persecuting them, Jesus changed him, no matter what he had done. And when he believed and received the Holy Spirit, he used him to tell the good news about to others about him. So Jesus can change anybody, no matter who they are, no matter what they've done. And if they repent and believe, he will use them in his kingdom. He will use them to serve. 
So, a summarized version of this is Paul or Saul hated Jesus' people, but Jesus met him on the road to Damascus and changed his heart forever. He started telling people about Jesus. He changed so much that now he wanted to tell people about Jesus instead of persecuting them. So Jesus changed Saul who hated Christians and Jesus can change anyone he chooses no matter what they've done. The same Jesus who changed Saul is the one who changes us today by the power of the Holy Spirit because that change was still by the power of the Holy Spirit. He helps us to believe and trust in him and to be good. Jesus forgave Saul and gave him the Holy Spirit. So when we do wrong, like Saul was doing wrong, we can ask to be forgiven. And we can ask that God changes us, that Jesus will changes us. If we are struggling with our habits that we know are not good, or we, like maybe there's sin in our lives that we are struggling with and we want to change, and maybe we've tried to stop doing a wrong thing and we keep doing it again and again. We can ask Jesus to change us just like he changed Saul. To help us to change us to be good. Just like he changed Saul from being bad to being good. Jesus mostly changes us to be more and more like him. Because he's good, so he changes us to be like him. And so if there's anything that we are struggling with, that is a bad habit or a sin or something we want to change in our lives and want to change and be good, we can ask Jesus to help us change because he has the power to change anyone no matter what they've done. By the way, it doesn't matter what you've done. He has the power to change you. He can change you by the power of the Holy Spirit. So if we are struggling with anything, we can ask Jesus to change us, to be good, and to stop these bad things or bad habits that we do. And I want you to think about your life and how you live. Is there any area of your life you would like Jesus to change? Is there any area of your life where you would like to change? Maybe from being bad to being good, or from being a bad thing or a wrong thing to doing the right because I want us to pray and you ask God to help you change that so let's take a moment and pray and think about any area you want changing or you want God to change you and ask him to change you because he can change you just like he changed Paul let's pray and you're going to pray for yourself first Lord Jesus, we thank you so much because you have the power to change anybody you choose, no matter what they've done. We thank you that you change soul from someone who persecutes Christians to someone who now tells others about you so that they can believe. We pray that you will help us in our daily lives to change from doing wrong things to doing the right thing. If there are any habits that you are struggling with, any sins that you are struggling with and you want to change, Lord, I pray that you will help us to change and start doing what is right and start doing what pleases you. We also pray for people we know in our lives who need to change, that Lord, you will change them just like you change So Maybe we have friends or relatives who are struggling with different habits. Lord, I pray that you will cause them to change by the power of your Holy Spirit and cause them to believe in you, to follow you and to do what pleases you. Help them turn away from wrongdoing to right, to doing what pleases you. And also help us in our daily lives to turn away from wrongdoing and start doing what pleases you. All for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm hoping that our, the lesson has made sense that Jesus can change anyone he chooses no matter what they have done wrong. Jesus can change anyone he chooses no matter what they've done wrong and when they repent and trust in Jesus they can be used by him. 
our memory verse is Acts chapter 2, verse 21. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Oh, another way to put that is everyone who believes in Jesus and repents will be saved. And that's what Paul, Saul did. He repented, he believed, he received the Holy Spirit, he was saved. So I'm hoping this lesson has made sense that God can change anyone and if you want to change anything in your life, any habits, any if you want to change and live the way God wants you to, you have help, you can ask Jesus for help. God bless you and have a nice week. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life brings me to see. Your life brings me to see. I will praise you all my day. Jesus, yeah.